I'm Meli Arif, Customer Success Officer at Smartdesk, a charity IT specialist. And today I'm talking with Carl Rouse, who is our Customer Success Manager. And today we're discussing how charities and not-for-profits can get most from their IT partner or managed service provider, their MSP. So, Carl, would you like to um, introduce yourself and tell us a bit more about your role at Smartdesk? Thanks, Millie. So, my name's Cole Rolls, and I work very closely with all of our customers as a customer success manager. I very much work on a day-to-day basis with our clients, whether it's working with strategic roadmaps or whether it's planning out their IT health via our IT health scorecard, and very much work directly with all the clients on a one-to-one basis as their account manager. So we know that a healthy IT function within a charity, it's not just about the technology. It's both about the process and the users, the end users at the end, the people. Um, What would you say is the most important in ensuring that the customer really gets the most from their IT supplier? Yeah, so firstly, I would say the, probably the most important um, out of everything for the IT supplier and uh, is, is to actually have a good relationship, is to be a partner with that particular charity, um, is to build that great relationship with them and understanding what that client needs and what we can do to help them to achieve those goals, whether that's through working with the client directly on training needs or whether it's through the systems that are not performing their roles on a day-to-day basis. We work very closely with them. We do this with all of our customers. We make sure that we pick up the phone or when guidance allows it, we'll get site visits. We we very much like to build a a good relationship with our clients. We make sure we have regular account review meetings. I do SLA service level agreements and stats reviews with the clients. And as I say, we build an IT health scorecard, which allows us to strategically plan the roadmap for IT. A charity or not-for-profit should expect their IT supplier to always be forward thinking, defining a roadmap and looking at how time can be time that's logged can be improved, dealing with these issues and not just reacting. So being a very proactive service desk, that means that we can build trust with our customers and then it's an equal partnership to meet the overall business objectives. It's really great to hear. And you mentioned about being proactive and that's a very important point, I believe. And how important do you think it is actually for an IT supplier to be proactive in the relationship? It's really important for your source IT team to be proactive. You really do want to be able to get to the stage where the IT supplier is thinking for the charity and staying ahead of any potential issues before they arise. Your supplier or or system should be monitored 24-7. They should be able to highlight issues before they become a major problem. And and this would also be backed up by the proactive team working in the background, looking at those reports, looking at those alerts that are coming in. It should mean success in staying ahead of any potential problems and stopping them before they progress into a big problem for the organisation. For instance, a reactive service desk should know there's been a data, data breach and your supplier should be able to act on that before the attempt becomes a reality. What about those issues that perhaps niggle a customer, but they never mention until it actually becomes a bigger issue? Yes, it's a good one, Millie. So they can be tricky. Um, but again, it goes back to having that really good relationship with the client. So hopefully any issues that would be there would come out of the, re- of the account review meetings, but also through the opportunity of the clients leaving feedback. So Feedback at Smartdesk is really important. So we look at feedback as 360 degree. So it's good to be able to see the positive comments, but it's also good to be able to see when there's been an issue so that we can go and rectify that and make sure that the issue doesn't happen again. So it's nice It's nice to always have that good idea of what's going on and be able to feed back to the end users and the client. And we're always constantly open for communication from all levels across the organisation. So transparency is a key part of the relationship and utilising the governance team and being able to open audits and risk registers will help progress, obviously, these areas of the organisation. It is actually very important to be transparent. As you say, transparency is key. Um, In that case, then, how can an IT provider help a customer who's perhaps not IT fluent and is maybe not confident with technology? How do you make them feel not overwhelmed? You can sit there and talk tech and be very sort of very tech minded, but actually um, it's about really being talking in a jargon free language, really understanding uh, what it is you're trying to achieve, what the deliverables are and what the goals are. Being helpful, um, I think, is another key element. Um, You you don't want to talk to your IT provider and don't feel like you're going to get the help that you need. And, And again, going back to having that communication, 
making sure that there's regular face-to-face meetings, regular face-to-face training, weekly webinars, drop-ins, anything that we can do like proactive site visits that ensure that we can help that they don't feel overwhelmed by technology. One of the areas we also find that massively helps as well is empowering staff internally to to have the the skill set to be able to understand the technology they're using. So making them digital champions, sharing best practices and empowering the users to be able to self-help is is really key. Each customer would have their own sets of challenges and pressures. How do you ensure that you are meeting their individual requirements? It's about understanding what the pressures and challenges actually are, making sure that you're listening to the client and, and actually getting an understanding of those issues because you can try to solutionize problems that don't exist So it's about really talking to them, taking a holistic approach and working strategically on on the roadmap and having that IT health scorecard in place so that you can see where you want to be in three years time and also make sure that that's planned and and understood for in the budgets and making sure that you've just not got a sort of predefined set of products as well. Each client is different. Each client's requirements are different. And that solution needs to potentially be bespoke to that client. So, yeah, definitely understanding what the pressures are, what the requirements are, and and defining a solution from that is is very important. So we know that most charities do not have an internal IT department and so will not be aware of how technology can actually solve their problems. They do not know what is out there, so they can't actually ask for it. Um, What do you think can actually take the customer-supplier relationship to the next level so it's more of a partnership? That's the key point that you you mentioned yourself there, Melly. It's a partnership, and it's really about building those relationships. And the IT provider becomes essentially a trusted supplier. So, yeah, it's it's, it's partnerships and building relationships. You want the IT provider to consistently perform their day-to-day tasks and the promises that are made are fulfilled that builds that relationship and the trust that when you ask for a job to be done or when you ask for some advice that you know that the people you're speaking to are giving you sound, honest advice. I think it's also about getting to know the users as well and the trustees and the volunteers that are within the charity because they're, they're going to fully understand what the requirements and the needs to deliver the services actually are. More on that point, actually, how important is it for an IT provider to understand the broader kind of organizational aims of a customer beyond the technology needs going into like strategy? Very important. We're passionate about the missions of the charities that we support. It's part of their fabric. So for, for the long term, we want those charities to succeed. So we, we really sort of embed ourselves and understand what they're trying to achieve as a charity. And we take that forward. And I think that's one of the areas that we are, we're specialists in the not-for-profit sector. We really understand the constraints of that sector and some of the benefits that we can take from that sector as well, uh, charity licensing and the discounts and the rates that are available for charities. So, yeah, it's it's, it's important to, to take time to understand what your aims are going to be and in serving those, those beneficiaries. And, and this could be things like new services or events that might be planned, fundraising, things that may be going on internally. So, yeah, it's, it's about really sort of understanding the, the client themselves looking at the uh, the amount of users and, and and the future expansion and where they're trying to what they're trying to achieve in the future and their goals is is also really important uh, new offices that may be set up or sites that are going to be opening up and how we can improve the IT or, or or help the IT that's in those environments we're looking to ensure that IT continuously proves to serve our customers mission so making sure that everything we do delivers the tech that they need to deliver their broader strategic aims. And being part of that conversation is key. So right at the beginning, when the charity is making those decisions about the IT roadmap, the website design, we can be part of those conversations and make sure that we offer any help and advice where possible. That's all been very valuable. Thank you, Carl. I feel like you've really highlighted how important it is to build relationships as well as provide IT solutions. If anyone has any questions, who should they contact? You can contact solutions at smartdesk.co.uk and we're happy to have a chat with you or if you'd like to organise a technology review, this is free for charities and not for profits. So please do contact us and we can look to book something in with one of our IT directors.